What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of the Extracurricular where we talk about things that we want to talk about that don't necessarily make it onto a full podcast episode or we think don't really need to be on a full podcast episode, but things we want to talk about nonetheless. Sometimes it's a timing thing, sometimes it's just what we're talking about. Justin, sometimes stuff deserves a little special breakdown. Yeah, um, and today we're going to be talking about the patch for Pokemon Unite. It came out a few days ago. Uh, we're recording this on Friday. It came out on a Wednesday. Probably put this out on a it Monday. Came out October 19th patch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you got the actual dates. That's that's better. <laughs> that's better than better than my knowledge. So, Justin, lots of things to talk about in this patch. Like we said, we wanted to touch on this, um, but we didn't want to wait till the podcast to do so. So, Justin, why don't you start yeah, it's us really, off? Yeah, really important. Yeah, yeah. So, obviously, they kicked off with the Halloween festival. Um, and the they obviously booted right up day one with uh, Greedent. Uh, technically, I guess the, the patch came out, depending on where you are in the world, either Tuesday night the 19th or Wednesday the 20th. But officially, it's the um, October 20 patch. So... Essentially, uh, there's a lot of stuff all for Halloween, which, you know, for Brandon, you're new to mobile. This is your first time seeing like a full like holiday shindig go down. So yeah, yeah. what are your thoughts off the bat? I love it. Like this home screen, uh, we got the home screen up in the background. I got my character up with a pumpkin head on. Like, this is what I wanted. You know, like I wanted that home screen. I to love look this trumpet flying around in yeah, the back. Shop I'm it. a home rep, obviously. I, but I wanted to see like Drift know, Bloomer back there. Yeah, this. Yep. This like this aesthetically, um, and then even the map for the uh, for the four v four holiday mode that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, that map is covered in pumpkins and all sorts of stuff like that. That's that's what yeah. I wanted to see. That's this is exactly what I wanted exactly. to see out of it. So the the first thing we'll get out of the way. Uh, there are some hollowware both for uh, there's some costumes you can put on your trainer. There's a couple of hollowware skins for Pokemon. Uh, the Lucario came out. It's another insane. Like we can't bear the lead. It's overpriced. Yeah, it by is. a lot. It is it's overpriced. Insanely overpriced. That's by, by far the the number one like most negative aspect of Pokemon Unite so far. And it's something I'm really sad to say yeah. and see. But it seems like you know they first came out with the Nine Tails thing, and now they're doing it with Lucario. And now they we've seen the pumpkin lottery thing. Avoid that like the plague. It's it's just a a scam. Thank God it doesn't take real money. But <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, it makes me a little worried. But the Lucario skin's cool. It's just not worth forty bucks. Yeah, Period. it is cool. We we could do like a whole another extracurricular on like the the economy of this game, the good and the bad. And but we're not going to do that because we don't want to seem like negative Nancys. Because exactly because we're not so so we keep that those conversations. We play this game every day, so it's yeah every day. yeah we keep those conversations between us. Plus you know we're, we're glass half full kind of channel. So um, exactly yeah. But the bottom line, it's overpriced. Don't buy it. Oh, I should yeah. say don't buy it. I mean whatever. Not nah, like straight up like that's that's my call too. Just don't. I don't want anybody to buy these skins because then they're just going to keep doing it. Yeah. So my advice to people who are watching this. I'm never, I'm never gonna buy those skins, even if it comes out for my favorite character. I'm never gonna pay that much money, no, especially either. when you compare to like what you get in League for like twenty bucks by comparison. Like the DJ Sona skin comes with a full EP, right, right, built in. Like this is not the same quality. No. So, uh, but past that, there are some cool, uh, some really, really cool like costumes and and design elements you could put on your actual character. Brandon's got the Jack O' Lantern Pikachu. I guess yeah, I'm just, I've, I've got the, the Pikachu gym. pumpkin yeah. head. You can see it on my screen right now. Um, Definitely. I'm just going through uh, the shop real quick and just show off a couple yeah, of these. Lots of, lots of fun stuff. Uh, I've got the brand new. Um, I've got the brand new frame already from yeah. collecting some pumpkins from the stadium. So that, we'll jump into there. Brandon, you want to tell us about the uh, the new four v four mode for this Halloween event? Yeah. So the new four v four mode is actually pretty fun. Um, it's I like it because it's giving out rewards for like the pumpkins like stuff. But um, yeah, well, basically what it is is uh, it's the four v four where Zapdos would pop up three times. However, he's not. He only pops up at the one minute mark this time. And you can throw pumpkins at each other to make each other lose mobility, lose um, AO synergy, lose cooldowns, all sorts of things like that. 
Yeah, it's um, pretty crazy. It's really, really, really disruptive. Yeah, it but is. But it's fun for like a, you know, lo- a very you know low stress, casual kind of thing. It's it's really fun, but it's definitely not the same as any other form of Unite in that it's just so disrupting to every and all players on the map. So you kind of have to go into the grain of salt. I'm personally not somebody who wants to sit around for hours and hours and play the pumpkin mode. I'd rather just play the regular Unite mode, but it is fun for just a couple of, you know, like a warm-up game or, or, or you know, just kind of shooting the stuff with your friends, so to speak. And I, I'm grinding it out for around. those pumpkin rewards, man. Me and my kid, actually. Sure. we're Me and my kid just got like six or seven of them in and ended up winning a whole bunch. So, like, I'm already almost done. I think I got to win, like, two more games in the pumpkin mode with a friend. And I've cleared all the yeah. stuff for the pumpkin. Hey, Ellie. Ellie, we're, so we're you, talking. We're talking, Ellie. So, so do you want to... <laughs> so, obviously, the, the you get pumpkins in this thing. It's a special in-game currency. Yeah. And you can spend the pumpkins in the store on a bunch of different things. Like, you can get greeted for free up to set with 70 pumpkins. That's what Brandon and Doug are both doing. Uh, I, myself, bought greeted outright. Uh, yep. And that comes into our next bit of news, which obviously Greedent, the big fat chipmunk, is the next uh, character. Is the next character for uh, Pokemon Unite, and he's a defender class, and he's really really fun. Uh, he's a little clunky. He's not uh, Blastoise or Snorlax level. No, not this is my initial thoughts after the first yeah, couple of days. I agree with that. He's a little bit more similar to like Mamoswine in that, like he's good, but he's not as smooth as he could be. He's just a little clunky. Um, I personally prefer the uh, build going with Stuff Cheeks and Belch. Um, the, uh, what should we call it, Covet is a fun move. It's a little weird. The Bullet Seed's fun, but again, it's kind of awkward to use. It's not bad, but it's just it's more user-friendly to use the other one, so that's the one I've been using so far. Uh, we will be putting out a guide and some videos uh really soon or it's if it's already up on the channel then the link will be in the descriptions depending on when these videos come out but yeah uh he's super super fun he is the fourth defender class that we've got or excuse me the third defender class that we've gotten in four um pokemon so they, they're definitely giving defenders a lot of love so yeah, they are. i'm looking for maybe another speedster or an all-rounder next that would make me pretty happy yeah uh which but the rumor has it that we might actually be getting an attacker. So, Brandon, you want to talk about this next piece? This is actually a pretty uh, popular thing going around right now because they actually s- sort of maybe spoiled it with the Greedent picture release. Yeah. So, obviously, uh, they, they they showed Greedent uh, the day of, and the Halloween thing went live, and it shows a picture of a bunch of Pokemon scoring goals. It's all Halloween-themed, but you see Greedent front center dunking the goal. You want to tell them what was uh, hidden in that picture? Yeah, hiding in the bottom right corner. Hey, Ellie, what's going on? <laughs> hidden in the bottom right hand of that corner is a little, little pumpkin that looks like a familiar round bird. A little, little mm-hmm. familiar round owl. His name is Rowlet. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Very happy. Um, so there's been huge rumors about this Digivite coming into the game for a little bit, especially since this uh, patch came out. We have yeah, actually. I was we have s- we have legit data mines too. It's not just a rumor because of this picture. It was data mined a couple of weeks before any of this Halloween stuff started showing up. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that'll be pretty interesting. I, 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 he fits the mold of what this game is, you know, so well in my opinion. Um, totally. So, you having to, you know shooting long range arrows and stuff like that. I think it's going to be really cool. So. Yeah, really looking forward yeah, to that. I, I've been... I expect him if he gets in to be an attacker. Yeah, well, yeah, obviously the attackers right now are split up between either a mage or a marksman, but they're all ranged, squishy DPS. So I definitely expect if he gets in, he'll be that, and he'll be obviously the marksman with the bow and arrow. I'm super, super happy about it. I'm saving uh, my coins. I'm saving my oh, coins. I, I didn't buy Greedent. I, as soon as I found exactly. out that Greedent can be bought with pumpkins, I was like, all right, I'm saving my coins for Decidueye. Definitely, definitely. Uh, and, and, and then it really is, if you are somebody like Brandon, who you're kind of working your way through the roster, that's that's totally the way to go. I, I couldn't agree more. I'm uh, always am... keeping my eyes out for, like, freebies. Like, you know what I mean? When they were doing, they gave away Crustle when the game first came out. They gave away Greninja. Yeah. They gave away Cinderace. Zero Aura. Zero Aura. I'm always looking for yep. those freebies, and I'll take those opportunities Absolutely. as best I can. Well, yeah, definitely. And especially for you, because you're 
you're not somebody who's just going to buy them all and like I'll get to them later. Like you're you buy a new character and then you you put the work in and then you move to the next one yeah. and then you put the work in then you move to the next. So if you're going to do it that way, I totally agree. My dog bark, is just bark, bark. being a little <laughs> bark bark being a little, be a little spitfire, huh? Yeah, that's what she does. So yeah, um, it's really really exciting. Uh, obviously, the resident grass leader here. I am the gym leader for, of the grass gym for the PMC. Really, really happy to get any and all grass reps in this game, but especially a grass starter as, as popular and as of a cool of a design as uh, as Decidueye, almost a Noctowl, as Decidueye is. Like, <laughs> Pretty he's a, close. He's, but, but... Owl, he's got the bow and arrow. He's just, he, he, knocks, he, he knocks off uh, like every check. Excuse me, he checks every box on my list. Yep. There we go. Yeah, for sure. Um, so Justin, let's you want to move into the nitty gritty of this? Let's talk about some Pokemon that got buffed and yeah. nerfed, and then talk about we've played all this the characters. This is the main meat. This yeah, is yeah. the main meat of it. We've played all the characters. We've we've played all the builds. Uh, everything that's been buffed and nerfed. So we've got opinions on yes. all of them, and then we're going to talk about the mechanics that have changed as well. Justin, why don't you lead us off? What Pokemon do you want to talk about first? So obviously, uh, there's been quite a few uh, balance changes today on this patch. Um, or this week, excuse me. So the, the the big one to note is the fact that they have given a lot of people some buffs and a lot of people some nerfs. The big ones, for me personally, they have nerfed Blastoise. Specifically, his ultimate damage has gone down. Um, they have also nerfed uh, the damage of Giga Drain on Venusaur, as well as the damage reduction after using Giga Drain on Venusaur. Pedal Dance is still the exact same. Um, what else? Let's see. They nerfed uh, Lucario, so he yeah. does less damage uh, after his ulti. He also does less damage uh, from the power-up punch combo, uh, and his passive procs less frequent. So the the basically the cooldown on his passive ability got increased. Yeah. Um, so those are the, the three really big ones that stick out to my mind. Do you have any big nerfs you want to talk about? Um, as far as nerfs go, uh, I want to talk specifically about Blastoise first. Um, because yeah, that's, definitely. that's the character I feel like that I've played the most that it, that received the yeah. most changes. Um, I mean, it's hands down, regardless of who you ask, anywhere from beginner to master, it's hands down he is the number one best tank. He's the best defender agree. in the game by far. Okay. He's, he's basically tank. damage hidden under a big fat shell. So <laughs> thick. Yep. Go so, ahead. So yeah, what do you think? So Hydro Pump, um, has, the damage has been reduced, um, and then his ultimate damage has been reduced. I, I definitely feel the damage reduction of hydro pump i will say that um yeah so much so that um they did they tweaked water spout as well didn't they that that one got a buff correct so they the, um we, we will talk we'll touch on this also so like venusaur is another one where they nerfed one but then buffed another yep. uh blastoise is another one where they they did nerf the the base damage of hydro pump and they nerfed the damage of his ultimate but then they buffed Slightly, but they did buff Water Spout. So, so I, they're definitely trying to make it more balanced so you have different options to pick because for the most part, myself included, most games I was choosing Surf over Rapid Spin, yes. probably 60-40, but like 99% of the games I was choosing Hydro Pump, I basically never ran Water Spout. Not that it was bad, not that I didn't test it, but in terms of like my ranked games, I just always was going with Hydro Pump. It had the damage, the range... Uh, the knockback, it, it ticked all the boxes that I need. And now with this new one, I feel like there's more, it's more of a player's choice. Like you're not necessarily there's, giving anything up. In my opinion, there is play for Water Spout now. Uh, I have been running Water Spout since Hydro Pump got nerfed and I have been enjoying the results. I love the slowed movement speed. It yeah. really helps us out in the laning phase. We've had some really good laning phases with Water yeah, Spout. It, it's really, really impactful. Like. My biggest problem with Water Spout is and always has been the radius of the actual circle that it drops itself. I just find it's the AoE is a bit smaller compared to like what I would be hoping for or wishing yeah. for. Kind of yeah. like, you know, if I was king for a day kind of thing. Yeah. But again, it's it's not bad. It does damage and it does slow. And again, you can still proc it with AoE throw, um, from within your rapid spin to do that big AoE slow in a team fight. So there's definitely play. It's It's yeah. always been... Decent, now it's straight up good. Yeah, it is. So that's all I wanted to say for Blastoise, man. You want to move on to one of yours? Yeah, so um, those are the, obviously, like I, obviously, like I said, those are the big nerfs for basically this whole patch. Uh, there are, are more here. We're 
you know, you could go over the patch notes yourself. We're not going to touch every single thing, but the buffs that we want to talk about. So like I said, with Venusaur, um, he's one of my mains. He's top three of my, uh, most played characters in the game. Uh, I obviously I am the grass leader. So it just kind of goes to the best starter in history, shown. dude. Yeah. Yeah. So the, uh, <laughs> he's pretty good. So, <laughs> Basically, for anybody that's playing over the past two weeks, you know from since the 1013 patch, he's been incredibly overtuned. Uh, the Pedal Dance Giga Drain build, which has always been since day one, whether it was bad or good, has been my preferred play style. Coming from League, I play a lot of tanks and bruiser junglers, so that frontline, in your face kind of high risk, high reward play style just fits me personally. So then to see it get a buff, I was really, really happy. Um, it did need a nerf, like realistically. It doesn't yeah, it matter. Did. It was one of my favorites. It's just overtuned. I can admit when a when when a character that I like is too strong, uh, and that was the case there. Um, so what they decided to do, um, and I'm sort of happy with it. What they decided to do was essentially, like I said, they uh, when you pop Giga Drain, obviously you do damage. You heal yourself, and then for the next X amount of seconds, you get damage reduction. So they reduce the damage of Giga Drain the move, and then they reduce the damage reduction effect after you proc the move. Um, so the two things that did not get touched was, or, or I guess a couple of things, but the, none of the cooldowns got touched. Nope. Pedal Dance didn't get touched at all, both in its cooldown, its duration, or its damage. And then also the hidden mechanic of every time you deal damage with Pedal Dance, you get cooldown reduction from or on your Giga Drain. That's also not touched. So. I have run it in three games. Uh, I I do still like the build. I think it's absolutely still viable. It's just before it was very low risk, very high reward, and now it's a little bit closer to even. Where yet there's a there's more risk, and you have to work for the rewards. So it is closer to where it should be in terms of balance, and I'm happy that they did it because overall, I I really am a big fan of that AOE damage from Pedal Dance. That's Mm -hmm. just insane like to to uh, having like an enemy zero aura that's afraid to jump on you yeah that's a big like, that's a big deal that's a big 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 uh advantage to the build um other things that we want to talk about obviously well i'll kick this one over to you but the uh the, the number one pokemon mascot the little yellow man himself he got some nice buffs not necessarily what the pmc was calling for or asking for uh when we had talked about him previously but it is a nice little bit of love and you did get to play a couple games so you want to talk to us about the pikachu yeah so big things here thunder got a buff uh, a little bit of a damage buff i believe uh volt tackle also got a buff I still don't think there's play for Volt Tackle. I don't think you would take Volt Tackle in any situation um, over Thunderbolt, to be perfectly honest. Having the long range poke, as well as having um, the ability to stun from long range and wherever you want on the map, that's, in my opinion, way more valuable than Volt Tackle. But yeah, it's, definitely. It's hard to not take Electro Ball, but if you. you they're both great. Honestly, they're both great. If you don't have a problem aiming, you can safely take Thunder now. If you're the kind of guy that kind of has an aiming problem or you miss your skill shots or maybe you're kind of new or maybe you just like suck like me, then you take Electro Ball. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I do like the buff because um, it creates a situation where I'm like, where I'm weighing my options in game and I think that's good. Like that's what you want out of the game, right? You know, you mm -hmm. you want to be able to have those options um and and i really like that i really love it it creates uh a situation for pikachu that keeps him more safe because he's so squishy you can just keep poking yes. from long range and i think that's really really valuable for him so uh if you want a nice long range really high damage character i think pikachu is really fitting that bill right now yeah i agree um so for me personally i still run Electro Ball and Thunderbolt. Yep. That's my preferred play style. Um, I've never really been a big fan of Bolt Tackle just because of how squishy he is. Yeah. And um, I do like Thunder, but I, it's it feels to me like a less... How do I say? Like a less efficient version of Psy Shock. Yeah. Uh, one thing I want to say, another thing against going against Bolt Tackle... Um, it's got the lowest scaling out of all four of the moves, so you're getting the least amount of value, like damage-wise, from Volt Tackle mm -hmm. 
So you're especially if you're running a special attack build. Yeah, so if you're running like a like a double specs build, um, you definitely don't want to run Volt Tackle because you'll be getting more mileage out of Thunderbolt. So just something to think about. Correct. Something to think about. Correct. So the other big ones here that we want to talk about real quick. Um, obviously, Garchomp did get a buff. Uh, it's pretty nice. We are undecided about whether or not, you know, as PMC grew as a whole, we're undecided whether or not it's going to make him less bottom of the barrel. Because let's, let's let's be honest, right now he's the we're two days ago pre patch. He's the worst character in the game. Pretty much an objective fact. Yeah, um, he's just struggles on so many different levels. You know, we've talked about this before. Uh, the lack of range, the lack of mobility early, his really late evolutions, it's just not that great. Uh, but they have buffed Gibble uh, two patches ago, and now they're buffing Garchomp here. They did buff Garchomp a couple patches ago with his movement speed, but it was super minor. Yeah, it was, it was, it was uh, very forgettable. <laughs> very forgettable. So basically what they did here is they gave more damage... Um, and I believe cooldown reduction to his Dragon Rush ability, which is really, really awesome. Yep. Uh, it, I don't think it's going to make him, like, jump from F to A tier. But I think he's decent. I yeah. still think Machamp and Charizard are better. Obviously, Lucario is the best of all all-rounders because he's really more of a speedster. But yep. Garchomp is still the worst out of the four all-rounders. But I, I, I don't think he's... Like, be, a couple days ago, if somebody picked Garchomp, I would literally be like, well, crap, we're going to lose this game because, like, it's 4v5. That's <laughs> yeah, kind yeah. of how it... Uh, I'm being a bit facetious, but not really that much. I just... Garchomp was... Even if it, somebody in the PMC crew picked him, it felt like a hindrance to the entire squad. Um, yeah. And it doesn't feel that bad anymore, but it also doesn't feel that great either. You just got to so, enable him. You have to enable him definitely. with, like, that's a good CC or, like, a Blissey or something like that. Something yeah, that's going to keep him alive and help his damage. He's definitely a Pokemon you still need to build around. You need to build and play around the fact that he's on your team. He's yeah. not just a plug-and-play. Right, right, right. Uh, and that's pretty much all the big, uh, notable uh, in terms of Pokemon. You want to talk uh, about the... Well... The other Pokemon, but the non-playable ones, the objective Pokemon got touched. All three, actually. And it's yes. pretty exciting. So let's, let's get into this one. Let's start with um, Zapdos, because there's not much to say here. Uh, Zapdos, mm -hmm. the amount of Aos energy that you get when you KO Zapdos has been reduced from 20 to 15. Um, Meh. Basically, literally zero difference. Uh Yeah. It's, that you're still it's was scoring. You're still double. Broken. Yeah, yeah. I mean everyone's got their opinion on Zapdos and how that mechanic works. And I would still like to see more changes to it. Um, more along the lines of what we talked about, which was um, either remove, remove, that insta remove insta scoring or remove double scoring. I want double scoring removed. Justin wants insta scoring removed. Um, but you know, uh, maybe, maybe it could be something where like you can Somewhere, meet in the middle. You, I like, don't know. Yeah. Keeping Zapdos the way it is now, it's just, I fear for the longevity of this game. Yeah, let's put it that way. Yeah, you know, they, and it's a, I think I believe it's a thirty second window for them to score. Like you could maybe even reduce that to twenty five, and I think that or would, fifteen. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah, anywhere between like I feel like twenty five, even just twenty five, like just that would make a difference too. But yeah, reducing definitely. from twenty to fifteen doesn't really make that much of a difference. So no, and, and, and it, you weren't going for Zapdos because of the Aos energy that it gave you, anyways. No, you were, you're going. Point. Yeah, you're. If you had twenty points in your pocket and you guys cap Zapdos and you got forty, and then it, that double score turns into eighty. So now that is turning into seventy or whatever. So it's like exactly. Mm. It's still it's still probably enough to win most of those games if you get the score in regardless whether or not you have the extra five or in this case ten because of double or not. Yep. So that's that. Dreadnought, this is a, probably the biggest one of the three. Uh, Dreadnought, the amount of shielding you get when you KO um, Dreadnought has been reduced as well as the amount of experience you get. Um, yeah. Justin, how do you feel about it? So obviously it's been no surprise uh, to anybody that's been paying attention or playing this game that Dreadnought is uh, or was, excuse me, like infinitely more valuable and important than Rotom in terms of the two neutral objectives, one on top, one on the bottom. Yes. And every single game that we played, 110% of the time, there was 
a game plan for both sides of the field. You go top, you farm out until around 7.30, maybe 7.20 if you're pushing your luck, and then top rotates down for Dreadnought. Yep. Now, uh, and we'll get into it, uh, it's twofold here, but now with the changes to Dreadnought and what we'll get into, the, cha- the eventual changes to Rotom, it makes the map feel more balanced, wherein that Rotom, or excuse me, Dreadnought is incredibly valuable still because it's map-wide experience. And it is the shield, which is cool. Yep. But it's not an auto pick anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not It's not like if you miss a dreadnought, it's as detrimental, like, oh god, we're way behind now. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like y- yes. I it, here's my uh, my take on the situation. Uh, our objectives are objectives. I still think you should rotate to dread if you mm-hmm. can. Like if if um and then rotate up to Rotom. Especially um, if that's your team's like game plan going in. You yeah, squad. yeah, you know, if Rotom's value has gone up, so we'll talk about that a little more. And, um, but, but you know, objectives are objectives, and, and you should take as many of them as you can. That's what's going to give you the edge. That's what's going to help you win games. Um, but, yeah, I, that. It, let's talk about Rotom. Let's talk about Rotom. What, what do you think about Rotom, yeah. man? Let's t- tell so, about Rotom. obviously, the changes to Rotom were pretty huge. Uh, I've always been a, a, a decent proponent of... Um, Rotom, I've always thought it was a little bit more valuable than some other people in our group, and that's totally fine. It's more of like a vanilla to chocolate type of thing. Um, but I have always agreed that it's like if you had a bullet to the, or a gun to the head type of thing, like if you had to choose one, it's Dread every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Now what they did is they made Rotom move. So basically you take Rotom, and what he does is he would move – down that side of top lane, you know, towards your enemy, whoever whoever capped Rotom and move against your enemy and go to the first goal in lane. And then it once it touched that goal, it would give you like a 10 second, I think, or maybe 15, like whatever. Maybe 15. In a couple seconds of insta scoring. So a midway game to just boom, dunk 40 or whatever, right? Yeah. And that's pretty useful. But Rotom was really slow. It was, had a lot of HP and it did decent damage. So it was a big distraction piece. Like you could get the Rotom and then just like let it push while you went bot and tried to take Dread or whatever. And it kind of, the enemy team went up to mess with it. But now they increase the movement speed at which it travels from like once you cap it to go to the goal. And on paper, like the patch notes are a little vague. So like they didn't tell us. Yeah. Yeah. That. The, we gave this thing jet fuel for breakfast. Dude, they put a choice scarf on it, man. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> they, they, they choice like, scarf for Rotom, dude. FIFA lies now. It yeah. is actually so good. Like the change to Rotom, I think, is actually the biggest out of these three changes to objectives because I agree. even if they had kept Dread where he was, even if they kept Dread where he was pre-patch, this iteration of Rotom would have been enough to change people's perception of okay. We can't just let them have Rotom now. Like, we actually have to defend. We actually have to go contest. It's not worth to auto-rotate to Dread 100% of the time. But the fact that Dread got nerfed and this Rotom buff, I definitely think it's as close to a balanced neutral objective game as we've ever had since this game's come out, it, whether in beta or now in, in live on the Switch. You know what? I'm really interested to see some pro footage now of this patch and see how they rotate. Because... Um, I haven't seen any from this patch. I don't know. If, there haven't been any tournaments, so um, yeah, I'd be really. Interested I think there's to one see. next weekend. I'm 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 super interested. I would love to see how they yeah. handle objectives. Cause we're gonna be doing so much research. I mean, we're gonna basically get some popcorn, have yeah. a nice bro night. We're not even gonna play any games. We're literally just gonna sit there and just watch. Yeah, and we should just spectate. Yeah, we'll just do like spectate yeah. mode or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's so much to learn from that. Like ba- back when I was in league, uh, Doug as well thousands tens of thousands of hours spent watching basically every game of lcs for a decade yep. uh, both in eu and in a and, and that's a big portion of where like the knowledge portion of of of, of whatever i have to, to yeah claim like as my skill i've, in this I've game. watched that's hours of from- i've always watched hours and hours of professional disc golf for years you know watching exactly. them is how i've built my form and stuff like that so there's value guys 
there's value there's in watching. Value. There's value in watching. So you know what I mean? Like, subscribe to Pokemon Masterclass, and you know you might learn. And make sure you hit too. the bell button. So you get a notification every time we upload a new video to the channel. Unite, VGC singles. We do it all. Yep, we do it all. So if you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. Um, yeah, we're gonna be covering it all, especially when Series 11 starts. So this is a really good extracurricular. We just wanted to touch base real quick and do sort of a pseudo little patch notes rundown. Again, we don't go through every single detail on these, um, but we it, we did think that this patch deserved some special noting because it was the holiday yeah. and just everything around it. So we just want to take time out on the day. We really appreciate you guys for um, tuning in if yeah. you did already. And like Brandon said, if you haven't already, we hope today's the day that you hit that red button down there with hit subscribe. Hit the buttons. Hitting hit the buttons. buttons hit the fun, buttons. And hit it helps the us buttons. Channel. Come on. You, it's right there. Hit it. It's right there. Just hit it. It's right there. Just hit it. All right, guys. See you later. <laughs> I've been zero. I'm Justin. Class is dismissed. Bye, guys. See you in the next one.